the mega logai of Yahweh Lilion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness. That the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished with all good works. Steady to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu, to the highest. Peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, one more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of His glory, which we don't deserve or earn or work for it. Purely by the grace of the Lord our God, He has given us one more day to look and to dig in that eternal manna prepared and kept for today's. This eternal manna, in the time of His calling according to the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to be, in the terms pertaining to a Rima declaration thoroughly prepared for His calling, being revealed till we could be alive on this earth through us. Even as such, being contemporary many men with us, even through them if they are faithfully having the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher being prepared and opening up their mouth in the sight of the Lord of our God according to His will, according to His word. Even likewise, till the rapture of the church in every generation of the Lord of our God has prepared and kept those faithful men who could handle this word accurately in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit of God, being thoroughly prepared to the glory of God. So dear brethren, keeping these things in mind, we have one more day being renewed in our lives, which we don't deserve and earn. If we have been given this breath in our life, it is purely by the grace of the Lord of our God to understand, to know, to seek, to search, as he says in 1 Timothy 2, 4, the will of Lord God the Father is not to perish, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge, epinosis knowledge, the full knowledge, not just gnosis or knowledge, but full knowledge, it is epinosis knowledge. In order to make you up to understand about this epinosis knowledge, we come to train you up every day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as it is the burden laid down upon our shoulders to represent the Lord of our God. As he says in Proverbs 8, 34 through 36, long back, day by day, those who wait upon the doorpost, those who wait upon the temple gates, in order to come back and learn the doctrine. The italics, plus these, has been replaced in the original Hebrew, who would come to learn the doctrine, the discourse of the mind of Christ. Happy are they, because they will find the favor of the Lord. Happy are they, when they would understand the word is blessed, when they would understand the fear of the Lord, which is nothing but to take in the counsel and the knowledge of the Lord. The greater you reject the fear of the Lord, the greater you reject the counsel of the Lord, Lord our God would laugh at your calamities, he says in Proverbs chapter 1. Because you did not fear the Lord our God, when you call, I will not hear you, said the Lord. So in order to talk according to his terms, he writes in 1 John chapter 3, we know, we have this strong faith that when we ask him according to his will, he is going to hear us. And how we can ask us? For that reason, dear brethren, we do his will in order to ask him according to his terms. So what we do, number one, the privacy of our priesthood, we do sin either by thought, word or deed. It is a great fellowship for us in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to know the truth and the truth can set us free. So dear brethren, this great and unique privilege given to us in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is nothing but the privacy of our priesthood, 1 John 1, 9, confession of our sins, because the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins so that we can have the true fellowship with Lord. And these things what have been given for us in eternity past, 
by the Christ our Lord our God, we enjoy the privacy of our priesthood and we come to learn in the terms pertaining to his will. So keeping these things in mind, dear brethren, we shall have a word of prayer and come back and continue our discourse, what we are covering about the stumbling blocks in Isaiah chapter 57 in verse number 14. Cast away the stumbling blocks. These stumbling blocks which have made for us not to move from milk to bread, from bread to meat. In the milk yesterday we were considering about the malays, how they have broken out the true standards of his word and they are not even ashamed even to break the standards and yet they are considering their life to be great so dear brethren we need to look our stumbling blocks the Bible says cast them off the stumbling blocks as a pastor teacher your duty is to daily teach the word of the Lord our God no matter however the people will rise to say we cannot teach every day though you are there for you though you are as a pastor teacher ready to teach every day they cannot be hearers for the word they will not come they will be very few so what when the demonetization thing that have happened in my country, India, they stood in the great cave even till night, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, because they wanted to take that money and they wanted to use for their affairs. So they knew, they knew what is the need of that. Much more than that is this great infallible and inherent word of the Lord of God for their lives. So they need to come when they would really understand what is the right fear and the true fear in Christ. So dear brethren, have, we shall have a word of prayer by the confession of our sins, what we call sanctify yourselves to look upon the pale wonders of the word of the Lord of God. And as Lord God, the Holy Spirit prepared and kept for us in today's spiritual manna, his great and accurate word, we shall come back and test it. Infinitely divine Holy Father, as we are going to study these things, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. Amen. The things pertaining to this great word, dear brethren, which is so much essential for us, as many people do not understand the great context of possession, what Christ our Lord of God calls us in Isaiah chapter 40 in verse number 1. He says, for them, my people, and then the word what he has used for us very specifically to understand the honorable title, what an assuring relationship we find besides calling us my people, he says, your God. What a pleasant task it is to comfort you, my people. The reason, dear brethren, comfort you the work given to us, my people, which is nothing but the great assurance of relationship in the word called as your God. Therefore, dear brethren, a threefold reason may be suggested for the duplicating of the charge. Number one, first, the believers sometimes refuse to be comforted and the consolation needs to be repeated. A second reason is to impress more empathically on the preacher's heart that he need not be sparing in administrating cheer. And the third reason is to assure us how utterly desirous God himself is that his people to be of good cheer in Philippians 4.4. So the reason to comfort, the reason wherewith he says my people and your God in three terms. Number one, because people, the believers refuse. That's the first something about what we are facing today. The people are refusing today to believe the right word of the Lord our God. They are refusing to be comforted. They are looking and seeking their stumbling blocks to be their comfort. Their frantic search of happinesses to be their comfort. So here we have, number one, the reason in Psalms 77 chapter was number two. The believers refuse to be comforted. That's the main problem with this. Why we are coming and giving you every day the word of the Lord our God so that you can build up your life in truth. But you refuse to take it. You refuse to build up in these terms. Therefore, he says in Psalms chapter 77, in verse number 2, In the day of my trouble I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be 
comforted. My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. In my trouble I sought the Lord. And why the things haven't worked out according to the will of God the Father? There is a very solid reason for us to understand in Proverbs chapter 1, which is so much essential where many people don't understand this simple truth which our Lord of our God has enlightened and kept for us in this word. And if you have your Bible, open it up to Proverbs chapter 1. The first reason what we can read in verse number 7 should certainly enlighten us to realize why they have been refusing to comfort because they have rejected what it is to be called as Yare or Yira 3374 terror, trembling, respect with reverence and dreadful reverence, exceedingly fear and fullness. The fear of the Lord, he says, is the beginning. And what is the word for beginning? Rashiat, the chief, principle, the most point of first one, beginning of knowledge. What is that knowledge, dear brethren? The death file, the perception, the skill, the discernment, the understanding, the wisdom. So, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools, why you refuse to be comforted? Because fools reject the knowledge of doctrine. Who are these fools? The strong number 191 says evil. Who are these people who mock, who are always having to be licentious? And this is what he says, the foolish men, what they do, they despise. They hold in contempt. They say it is insignificant. That's where you fail in your life. In Deuteronomy chapter 32 in verse number 47, the word of the Lord our God calls to our mind, this is your life. It is not a vain thing. Contempt means they hold it to say it is insignificant. Who? The fools. The fools despise wisdom, kakma, the true life, and instruction, musa, the discipline, the chastening, the correction. So the fools despise wisdom and instruction. Therefore, you refuse to be comforted. The true comfort is with my Christ. Apostle Paul says, the all-sufficiency is with my Christ. It is enough. His grace, what we call. His grace is sufficient for us. He teaches for us. And the problem with us is the pastoral epistles written for us in First Timothy. When we read this word, should certainly prick our heart to know. When Apostle Paul was writing these epistles, the pastoral epistles, what we call First and Second Timothy, the Second Timothy is the dying declaration of Apostle Paul in order to give us this mind to realize that we need to preach the word, Kerusatan Lagan, in season and out of season. And he talks about expressly the perilous times when the people reject the word of the Lord of a God and fail to walk in the word of truth. So he gets to our mind to understand about this perilous times in his dying declaration and is writing some of the things to Titus as well wherewith he wants them to realize what is the truth in Christ again. Talking about the Eusebian life, the godliness life. So in First Timothy we have some things to learn which should certainly prick our heart. Why these people are refusing to take, why they become fools, why they haven't taken Kakma and Musa. Beginning with verse number one, the, salve, the salutation, an apostle Paul of Christ Jesus by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is our absolute confidence. To Timothy, a true son in the faith, grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. And he gives the reason about the isagogical background I asked you when I went into Macedonia remains in, in, in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. The first thing that they may teach no other doctrine. If he has told that during the time of Macedonia while he was remaining in Ephesus, the same principle applies for us in our pulpits as well. 
teach no other doctrine. No other doctrine is nothing but your brother and what we can call if there is any other sound truth doctrine contrary to that is called as other doctrine pseudo if there is logia the truth aletheia what we call then pseudo logia false doctrines lies so here we have read yesterday in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit in order to enlighten us this word the way how Adam was being kept as an authority and Satan beguiled Eve, he deceived Eve, and in return Eve made Adam in return to eat that fruit. And that fruit what Adam ate caused all men to be sinned. The one who was in charge certainly was not making the lead as a leader to take the responsibility and Satan knows it cannot deceive the in charge, the authority person. It can deceive whom? Eve. How it can deceive? By training you up in the terms pertaining to lies. Very simple logic. So Satan sought to Eve to say, you can be like God. Satan sought to teach to Eve, telling to the point. It was desiring to eat. It is pleasant to your eyes. It was the pride of life. What was there in the tree, so beautiful it could attract even her to look upon the tree. This point, dear brethren, if we would apply today to the present church, Eve is nothing but the other doctrine what the present pastor teachers are teaching to you in your pulpits. Not the authoritative word of the Lord of a God, the first Adam, what he has given for us, what he has made to be, that is sin, he has given for us sin, sin nature, because of his sin, for by one man sin entered into the world. The last Adam, what he has given is eternal life, which is gift to Christ, because of God the Father, he has designed for us, and the Son executed it, and Lord God the Holy Spirit now he reveals to us. So, the last Adam, what he has given by the virtue of his life, he has set for us those standards which we shall not fall from it. We have to be over there every day. So, that is what the sound doctrine is all about. When they reject that sound doctrine, they are learning something which is other doctrine. Likewise, the first Adam, what he was, he would have been an authority, he would have stood upon the word and he would have said to Eve, No. Not to eat that fruit while she bought to eat. And then we find all so many reasons passing down the path, say, from Adam, from Adam to Eve, from Eve to Satan. Tomorrow, the judgment seat of Christ, you cannot pass down this path, says. You're responsible for your own calling in Christ. You have been given equal privilege and equal opportunity to walk like Christ, to shine like light luminaries in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations by holding forth the word of the Lord of a God. You are the one who are responsible for this. The fools despise wisdom and knowledge. The people who are believing to lies, by that we mean the man-made mandates, what Christ of the Lord of God has given, who has to be under authority, who is that of the church, that you reject and you develop in yourself stumbling blocks. Looking upon the time, you should see that these are the people who are communicating the Lord's word to the highest, but yet you find someone to teach. The same thing in 1 Corinthians 3, Apostle Paul writes, I came for you all to teach the strong word of the Lord our God, yet I find in you that you are want of milk, because you haven't broken up your father's ground. The strong reason for which they haven't broken up their father's ground. They haven't broken up their God. Neither they were interested to love the Lord our God. Therefore, in 2 Timothy, he writes for us those episodes. The end times people will not endure sound Bible doctrine, they want itching ears. And now for truth, they talk many of the Pentecostal crowds, the people are interested to conclude as end times because already two thousand years have come to pass and the rapture of the church will occur and it called them as end times. Even in First Thessalonians he wrote long back the end times. 
it is the grace of the Lord our God to keep fit even not to rapture then we need to be prepared but none to perish but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his word none to perish none in the entire world we need to make disciples not just to see their saving or being saved but to make them disciples of the word of the Lord of a God the sad part is these people haven't come even to realize that they should be disciples if not they are not Christians we cannot find reasons against the word of the Lord of a God to say that we are telling is right what the Bible says that alone will stand if the Bible says day by day you need to come to become the word of the Lord of a God and his disciples and his disciples have been called as Christians then no matter whatever reasons you may develop in your mind though I'm ready to teach the word if there are no people to come to listen to this word then it's purely your fault not to teach them the right word when you can inculcate in them the right fear of the word of the Lord of a God definitely they will come to listen and to become the disciples since you fail to train them up in those words, definitely they reject your counsel. And yet you go against the word of the Lord of God to talk about these things and you say, How is it possible for us to make every day, day by day, coming to wait in the doorpost of the temple of the Lord of God and listen Bible doctrine? How is it possible? It is not possible. You would love to talk about 101 silly reasons. <laughs> Therefore, dear brethren, proper evaluation of the evidence will certainly give you good interpretation and to make wise decisions on that what is that evidence heaven and the earth will vanish off but this world will abide forever and forever the proper evaluation will lead to proper interpretation of that evidence so how do you get that proper evaluation of that evidence in order to get right interpretation and good understanding of the subject until as you dig it back in the original language of the scriptures, you will not get it. That's very simple logic. Until and as you come back to take it in the original word, you cannot dig it. You may think what you're doing is great. You may think what you're performing is correct. In order to get proper interpretation and good understanding of that subject, you need to evaluate that evidence accurately. We have nothing but only one evidence, which is the word of the Lord of a God, the infallible and inherent word in the 66 books, and each and every word to be taught word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, in the proper isogogic categories and exegesis. That's what we read in John 1.18, No man has seen Lord God the Father, except his son has come and expounded it, explained it. That explanation is nothing but exegiomai in the Greek. How can we say we are able to perform it without exegeting the word? Therefore, this proper evidence of us, we need to properly evaluate. Nothing is more important for us than to evaluate this word and to give you an account. That's what the problem in Hebrews 13, 17, when we read that word, an account, many people think there should be something as an account, but it is nothing but logos. And with joy, we need to give our account what it is from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, as Apostle Paul illustrates in Acts chapter 20 in verse number 28. I have not shown to declare to you the entire counsel of the Lord of a God. That's an account. Teaching the entire word from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 is an account, and thus what you do, you properly evaluate. You need to evaluate that evidence properly, you need to evaluate. Then you can have proper interpretation and good understanding of your life on this earth. Without proper evaluation, you cannot. That is what this world is today. Therefore, we have that word, what we call, you are innocent until unless you are proven guilty, or till you have been proven guilty. Every pastor teacher who stands in the pulpits and they are happy enough to take their fat salary, they are innocent till they have been proven guilty. How they can prove themselves they are guilty? Not exegeting the word, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept from the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic without proper categorical of exegetical thoughts. That's what Andikaya Sunekaya Hoseatis Thes Alethia is all about. Thes Alethia in the regions nearing to exegetical categories of word to be explained, to be taught. 
and how will you come to understand what is straight doctrine and there should be no other doctrine for you the people how much they are interested to talk about other doctrines are ample in our pulpits they love to reason in every mannerism of their life they love to talk in every method of their life the stumbling blocks they haven't cleansed from their own soul and they think they are really the preachers and they think they are really doing great things in the world now give your account come let's look what is your account if you haven't expounded from genesis 1 1 to revelation 20 to 21 every word word upon word line upon line precept upon precept how can you give your account and that if you are not able to give it with great joy rather than groaning and grudging even that's a failure because you have to be all the time sleepless alert to be aware to purchase time which is the will of god the father to walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise men in christ to give an account what are great things we have in the word of the Lord of God for us to learn. Yet the translations have ruined your lives. Translations have ruined your thinking. Translations have made to be in... It has made to be fiddles. Infidels. Morons. And the same thing what we can find if the salt lose its savor what does it mean to say in the greek for savor it is nothing but mora and how many people are really interested to look upon these standards in the church age of teaching dear brethren the great problem in our pulpits today men are not interested for the truth in the world they just think like nominal Christians, we are paying our duties, we are paying our tithes, we are paying as nominal Christians attending the church, and that's it. It's enough for us. And what does the pastor need? He loves to beg from him what we can call them as tithes. And that's what they are today in our pulpits. They want to ask them tithes and they say, give me 10% of your income and you will be blessed. We are here to bless you. We have been taking our lives to such an extent to bless you by taking your money. <laughs> what have to be, they have not been in our pulpits like the way what have to rule Eve, Eve beguiled. Being beguiled by Satan, she went along, he went to deceive Adam. Because she came to know now what it was when she ate the fruit. <laughs> and she comes and gives to Adam. Adam looking at her, takes that fruit and he eats. That is not the point with my Christ. He cannot eat what the church says. If Christ our Lord of God is the ultimate authority, being the head of the church, the church should listen to the words of my Christ. Not what the church committee, denominational trends can set up. Therefore he says for us over here, I charge you that they teach no other doctrine, no other standards. The church in Ephesians 3, he talks about for us to understand the manifold wisdom of the Lord of our God to be taught. And he teaches to us, it is a classroom where you come every day to learn Bible doctrine. The Greek word for charge is paragelo. And that is what to declare a command. And what does it mean to say? For us in the context, I command you that you heterodidaskalas, that is what, to instruct differently. No, I 
can yok other heterodidascalas. Again, the Greek word for us used twice 2085. Again, if we read the same thing 2085, heterodidascalas, no heterodidascalas, or heterodidascalas, uk, or me, were not even by the least of it. What we call not even by the least of the negotiation any other doctrine heterodidascalas which is deviating from the truth no deviation from the truth not even by a simple means no deviation from the truth and that's what the command is for us the charge given for us the mandate given for us that some that they teach no other doctrine and at least today if we would understand hetero didaskalas used twice when the Lord God the Holy Spirit uses these words for us twice with the same emphasis in the same verse there should be some very serious condition the translation says that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Who are those some? The bona fide gifted pastor teachers. Heterodidas kalas may heterodidas kalas. No other deviation from the truth. No, not even by a single means. No chance. Because we are representing the Lord's essence. Nothing we can add to it. Nothing we can take away from it. We are talking about purely the essence of Lord God the Father in heaven. But today we look proper deviation from the truth. We can say how much the churches have been subtracted. The purpose of the church in Ephesians 3, every day to come and assemble to learn the manifold wisdom of God. The purpose of the pastor teacher to make you perfect and complete because of the catalysis process made to you. Therefore he says, even in Hebrews 13, 18, Katarizzo, to make you perfect the process according to his telema will. And that daily coming and learning the word of the Lord of God is catarizzus, day by day, growing up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, day by day, catarizzus. How much more it is for us to perfect these standards, the right work of the pastor teacher, the right work of the church. But when we look we do not even match to the translations of the reality. Far less we can go back and dig and tell for you in the original languages of the world. We are not even able to match the translations. The Bible says no heterodidascalas. Homodidascalas the same. Heterodidascalas of different nature. What is the word again didaske? To teach. And he gives you are a failure in heterodidas according to the will and the mind of Christ teaching. You would give heed to fables. The present pulpits have been filled up with fables. He says, neither you give heed, pros echo, to bring to fables, mutas, narrative story. Plato writes, the one who can tell story can rule the society. The storytelling people can rule the society of man. The oratory man can rule the society of different sects of religion. But Lord God the Father demands nothing but exit your mind. This narration of fables, of falsehood, of inventions, the word of the Lord of God says, you shall not give heed. Because people, when they fail to teach sound doctrine, they have their replacement in fables. Mutas, narratives, they have their origin for endless genealogies which cannot be passed through, boundless, endless, wherewith they love to talk about their lineage. 
when there is no right word of the Lord of a God, they come with narrative stories, oratory stories, fairy tales of stories, and they have endless genealogy of discourse, no limit. They would say about the history, saying to the point, why it is so, that it is so, not able to recognize the present time, the present crescent of time, valuable time. So he talks about when you fail to take sound doctrine, you love to teach heterodidascalas, different doctrine deviating from the truth. And when you have been teaching deviation from the truth, you love to fill it up with fables and endless genealogies. And they love to minister questions. What is this questions? Debates. The thesis, inquiry, seeking, not according to the truth, not according to the will of God the Father. So they have fables, they have endless genealogies, they have questions. That is to reach forth and ask many debating questions. Rather than our great word, godly edification. This is what the church is all about. Icodomia, erection, building, building up according to the terms of the Lord of a God's mind. Therefore we have been said, renovate the standards of your thinking, which is in faith, business, relating to Lord's God doctrine. And so you do. And then he concludes for us these two things in verse number 5 and 6. Why we are teaching these things to dear brethren? If you are a pastor teacher, don't love the flock, don't give them wisdom and knowledge, and you love to contempt. To hold fast and say, this is not significant for us. You hold fast and say, there is no proper edification for us through the word. We come weekly once. If you would hold fast and say, let's do miracles, healings and tongues and gibberishly jump along and dance along in every mannerism of your life. If you don't hold fast to the wisdom in Christ, if you don't hold fast to the knowledge in Christ, you love to get into heterodidas class. You love to get that which is vain, that which is false, that which is wrong. Which the word of the Lord of God says, Heterodidas kalas me, heterodidas kalas. No, not at all. Not even by a single ounce of it. Therefore, you find in our pulpits today, rather than ex geomai, the word of the Lord of God, they love to go for fables, endless genealogies. They love to minister questions upon questions, debating rather than edification according to the right terms of Bible doctrine, which is in his mind. What a sad part we are ending up. Therefore, they find insignificant the word of the Lord of God. They feel the love to talk about the terms pertaining to the failure by replacing with every mannerism of alibis. They would say, we are ready to teach, but there is no congregation to come. Inculcate in them the fear of the Lord of a God. Remove those tumbling blocks. That's your duty as a pastor teacher. That's your work as a pastor teacher. It is Lord God the Father who is going to operate through you according to the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit, training these children according to the grace given to Him through Christ, to honor Him and the work of the pastor teacher representing the Lord of a God in His teaching ministry to the greatest. You need to inculcate in them this great valuable truth. That's what your duty is all about. Be the trumpet. Spare not, lift up your voice and cry out. Tell them according to the anaginisco process. Analyze and exegete the word. Deviating from that will lead you to heterodidas kalas. What a great shame it is for us. We find people for heterodidas kalas to the maximum in our pulpits. Deviating from the truth, deviating from the principle, and having every mannerism of reason to tell why they are not able to make it up. They say, though the pastor is ready, yet the flock is not ready. Have you taught them in the word of the Lord of our God accurately so that they can know the value and the importance of this great word? You haven't taught them. You haven't been inculcated in them. You haven't learned about them. Can you? That's the problem with us. 
Therefore, we find your brethren in the present Christendom. They are teaching heterodidas kalas. Therefore, the word says, no. See that you are not going to give them this mannerism of heterodidas kalas because it's an absolute denial of such. We cannot expect it. It is an absolute denial in the mind of Christ. Therefore, be aware. Edify them according to the terms of the Lord of a God, what He is, what He mandates through us. And then He says, the end, the telelios, the termination of the commandment, that is what paragaleo, which is an announcement, a proclaiming, a charter, a commandment, is charity, agape, brotherly love. If you truly love the flock, you will lay down your soul, said the Lord for us in John chapter 10. For this brotherly love, the great love, the benevolence love, the dear love, this is the end, the telos, the termination of all the commandments. Out of a pure heart, catharsis, which is nothing but clunt, cardia, heart, and a good agate sune, good conciseness, suneresis, and of faith, again doctrine, unfaith, or anupokritas, or anupokritas, which is undisguised and always sincere. So, the end of all commandment is, out of love, that is what, in a pure heart, in a good consciousness, and faith unfeigned, from which some having turned away, deviated, astokio, that is what deviate from truth, which have sferred and have turned, here we find two words, atrapo and the word astokio. Astokio is nothing but for us the word called as taken from the right aim and for that right aim they are negative for us. That is a plus stokias, a being negative, to miss the mark, that is what an aim, what our Lord of God has kept, therefore from which some having not aimed and turned aside, that is, in a medical sense, used as as dislocated limbs, that is what they have come to turn aside, and what they have done, they have turned aside unto Vain jangling, matai logio, para logizomai, miscalculation of the true spiritual life. And here we find matai logio. If it is not in accord with the right word of the Lord of a God, Bible calls us, you are vain jangling. What is that accurate word of the Lord of a God, which is nothing but in the proper exegeomai categories and right dispensing technique of dispensations to teach word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. Therefore, what does he call? He calls them as mata logians, vain jangling, because they have lost their aim and they have taken a turn which is for dislocated process you cannot make your leg to be dislocated and think you're having your leg to walk such it is you have been dislocated from the right exegesis you have been dislocated from the right and infallible and inherent word of the lord of God, which says all the time to exegete the word being dislocated from those terms you cannot say you are doing the work of my christ therefore what does the bible say for us you are vain jangling matalagians you are came therefore dear brethren wake up besides despising wisdom kakma you have end up your life as vain janglings be aware about that what is that vain janglings you have taken? Matalogians, Pithologians. Having not according to the faith your talk. Matalogians, not according to the right will and the purpose of my Christ. How many days more you want to end up in vain jangling? Isn't it a great shame for us to look? You are still surviving in your matalogian concepts.
what a great pain it would be for us when we look and seek and search and understand that these people haven't come up to the mind of Christ, what he has intended them to be in the world. Therefore he talks for us, dear brethren, from which having some astokias, apart from the aim of the Lord, have turned aside, which is extrapo to twist unto vain janglings. And what is their desire? Teleo, which is nothing but have in mind, they have an intended, they have resolved, they have determined to purpose, to take delight in, and they have pleasure, desiring to be teachers of the law. And that is what it says for us, a teacher and interpreter of the law. No more plus didaskalas. No more means to law, didaskalas means to teach. They desire to be teachers of the law, understanding that is what no eo to perceive, to think upon, to ponder. Understanding neither what they say. If you're not having your base upon the original languages of the scriptures, your interpretations is wrong. Your translations can give you base. It's just a platform like a kindergarten. You need to learn the basic alphabets. You need to come back and develop in the love towards my Lord's word. There are some translations which are around 80 to 90 percent of accuracy, but we need to go back and dig in the original word. We cannot rely upon the information which is second hand. We need to go back to the primary information. Thus, we can make a proper evaluation of that evidence and we can take a proper interpretation and we can come to good understanding of the subject because we can prove you guilty by these words as the word of the Lord of our God calls. Until you have been proven guilty, you still shine like innocence in the midst of these congregations. We are not interested about the committee, what they talk. We are neither interested about what the things pertaining to your income that is coming to the church. We are interested with the pastor teachers who should teach the word accurately and if they haven't taught the word accurately you have been proven as guilty you may ask what is that you need to teach accurately heterodidaskalas you are in trap you have failed the mission to exegete the word Christ our Lord our God himself exemplified exegeomai in John 1.18 how many other people are going through exegesis in our pulpits therefore you are proven guilty Till you have been proven guilty, you may be innocent, but once you have been proven guilty, you cannot be innocent. Because you are not able to evaluate every word of the Lord of a God. Therefore, they desire to be teachers of the law, understanding what they say, which is what they perceive with their mind. Understanding neither, that meant to say what? They are not able to understand what they say, nor whereof they are accounting to give, they affirm daya bia omai, which is nothing but to affirm strongly, assert confidently. That is what the word says for us, daya bio bi omai. It's a compound word which has been taken from dia, that is what nothing but again through, and the word bebio which is to make firm established or confirm. So what they think they can affirm, they do not know what they say and they cannot give a confirmation for what they say. That's what it is called as dia plus bibuyomai. And the word dia bibuyomai together, they cannot give that great confirmation. And then the word of the Lord of God says, why they cannot give such confirmation? Because they desire to be teachers. According to the right law of the word. According to the right teaching, what they might given to you. The word says, hetera didaskalas, me hetera didaskalas. What a privilege it is for us. That God, the Holy Spirit, has penned and kept for us twice this word. Our primary responsibility as pastor teachers is to dig back that word to the right context and teach the truth. As many people don't understand about this fact, 
entering into the pulpit. They love to come and teach. They love to come and explain. They love to replace it with cunning fables. Apostle Paul says we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. So here, what does the word fables meant to say? A narrative story, invention, fictions, falsehoods. Teaching you to illustrate some of the points of fairy tales. This inventions, which is not in accord with the word. You may say, Christ our Lord of God illustrated through parables. He was doing that, that the time was not yet given for you to talk in the terms boldly in Christ. Therefore, he illustrated them for you in parables. But now we can speak these things boldly, said the Lord. John 16, 25. We are no longer talking in the terms of parables. We are talking boldly, parashia, in the presence of God the Father, to know the word. To learn the word, to teach the word, to exegete the word, to categorize the word. We are having something great in this church age which is so unique and true that we cannot waste our time thinking once again we could be illustrated by this, we could be illustrated by that. No, looking upon the time, you should remove those tumbling blocks of milk, tumbling blocks of bread, tumbling blocks of strong meat and become the fruit of Christ producing more fruit where God the Father has been glorified when you produce more fruit, says the word. Here we are not to combine some of the things, but we are here to teach to you exegetically, word upon word, line upon line, with a proper exegetical commentary given for us. We have so many things for us to learn, dear brethren. How can we be ignorant of that? Here they desire to be teachers. They have a desire to become teachers of the law. The present Christendom, the people are also interested to talk about the cunning fables, muthos, we can say directly on their face. You are coming to teach muthos. You are inventing your oratory stories. You are coming to teach that which is against the principal plan of God the Father. Therefore he says, no, you cannot even by a single ounce of doctrine deviate from the right word. The Lord God's will for the right word has been found. The end of all charity, the end of all commandments is love. If you have love towards the flock, you will lay down your soul. We don't have love towards the flock. If you have the love towards the flock, you would come back and teach every day, categorically, isagogically, exegetically, the word of the Lord of our God, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, day by day, from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 20-21, no matter it may take 40-60 to 60 years, you would come back and do that. You're not having that great command of love of Christ in your hearts. Therefore, he says, out of a pure heart, of a good consciousness and faith unfeigned, the word which is undisguised, sincere, without hypocrisy. So we are having this great love towards Christ, or are we having this great love towards Christ? You need to look upon them, because the end of all commandment is love. If you love the flock of the Lord of our God, said, you shall lay down your soul. We have come here to serve, not to be served. teachings which the Bible doctrine says for us in eternity past. Heaven and the earth will vanish off but his word abides forever no matter whatever it is. It cannot be changed. They abide and they stand forever no matter whatever it is. How we can replace, who are we to replace. Therefore the principal passage for us in Proverbs chapter 1 in verse number 7 why the people are perished. He talks because the fools despise wisdom and instruction. In Hosea 4.1 he talks about the great failure of this man and he calls them, Hear the word of the Lord, O children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy. The Hebrew word Rehab. He has a quarrel, he has a dispute, he has a court case. 
with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God. There is no amat. There is no faithfulness, firmness. There is no reliability, reliability. There is no continuance. There is no true doctrine. And therefore the Lord God says for us in First Timothy to understand the great passage talking to us no otherwise doctrine to be taught no strange doctrines to be entertaining the greek word again heterodidaskalas no strange doctrines therefore apostle paul gives a great warning again and again if they do not fall according to this rule depart from such company Rule what they have set. Again, here he says in First Timothy 1 3, the charge what I have given to you, give them once again the charge, a command, what I am writing to you. They shall not any by means, even by a single ounce, not teach any other doctrine, no heterodidas kalas, no by any means, not even to mingle by the infinity of point zero 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 because it is the true word. We cannot change the amath of Christ, we cannot change the essence of Christ. We can neither write to it anything, neither remove from thing anything. We need to teach the word. And the word for us in Jeremiah 26 2 says, Diminish not even a single word. Teach them the truth. Not even a single word to be diminished. Isn't it a great privilege for us? In order to do so, we need to be complete subjection. We need to execute the true fear before the Lord of our God, not before man. Yesterday we were looking in the stumbling block of the first stage of milk, hypocritical masks in 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. You haven't yet laid aside your malice, kakia, your jealousy, your vindictiveness, your bitterness. You haven't yet laid aside these things. And what do you have? Hypocritical mask, hypocrisis. And this hypocrisis, you're proving it before the Lord as well that you're right and perfect. <laughs> if our Lord of God could call you workers of iniquity, I know not who you are. Wake up to the fact in Christ. Preach the word in season and out of season. Look upon the true plan of Christ for what he has called us in the church age. Because it is, the, it is even in the past dispensation to come every day to learn the word of the Lord of our God, Proverbs chapter 8. It is in his terms what we come and analyze every day. Analyze and execute the word. Analyze and praise to teach the word. It is his word what he says. I have honored my word above his name. Then who are we to dishonor it? We cannot. How great rebellion it should be in your heart that you love to dishonor the Lord's word, the Lord's mind. Desiring to be teachers. James 3 1, we should look a passage over there. Because many people who enter today in the present Christendom for past teacher work, in fact, indeed, they have changed the legitimate title from PT to something what they call as reverend and right reverence, which is not honorable and justifiable at all. So James chapter 3 talks about for us, very great example. My brethren, be not many masters. The word again we find as didaskalas. Correctly translated should be teachers. Knowing, having this knowledge, idol, that we shall receive. Again, lambano, to take it with the hand. To take in order to carry it, we shall admit and we shall receive greater Maizan, which is stronger, which is of a large, and the word calls krima, condemnation. <clears throat> what is that condemnation? Which is nothing but, for you, a great damnation or judgment. Therefore, dear brethren, not many men to come to be desiring as teachers. If you desire to be teachers, 
It has to be by the will of that God, the Father, who has trained you up in the original languages of the scriptures to handle his word. Therefore, he says, if you have that tello, tello will, that is what determined purpose to serve the Lord of a God, as Apostle Paul did, you need to teach honestly because you are there to give an account to the Lord of a God. Therefore, in Hebrews chapter 13, in verse number 18, we have a great verse to teach. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good consciousness. Do you have that good consciousness to teach this word? So we trust, having that word trust again, peyato, which is to persuade, to induce, to believe, by looking upon the holiness of the Lord of a God. As Isaiah says, I am a man of unclean lips when I stand in the presence. I haven't completely declared thy glory. Here Apostle Paul says, we trust, we have a good consciousness. By that we meant to say we believe. We have been persuaded to believe, to induce, to have that faith to listen and to obey, and to have that absolute confidence to teach that we are having a good, concise, callous, beautiful, excellent, concise. The excellent, concise is what is missing in our pulpits today in the concise nature of this man who stand to teach the concise we call sumedesis that is which is distinguishing between good and bad promoting to be to do good and to shun the bad and then we have been called in your concise all the time to have that perception to realize what is good therefore your apostle Paul says pray for us and the word pray for us to communicate the mystery doctrine prosakamai which is to offer prayers for which cause we trust we have a good consciousness we are having an absolute confidence that we are having an absolute good consciousness in all things not only just teaching the word of the Lord of a God but the way how they have to behave when we read in first Timothy chapter 4 and chapter 5 the bishop the way how he has to be for example bishop the elder the presbyterian the way how he has to deal with the affairs of the family with the affairs of the fellow man in all things it includes with wife with children if he hasn't set to right his household how can he maintain the church the qualifications of them having to be husband of one wife and all these things he talks about we trust we have a good consciousness in all things in all and the word for us, individually or collectively, being represented before the Lord of a God secretly and before the public. Whenever you come back, it has to be an open book. Whenever we come back and search to you, it has to be an open book. Willing, that is what, teleo, having in mind again the intent, that is what the word, what we have read just now, even the same thing for desiring to be again that is what we have to be desiring to be teleo in first timothy chapter 3 chapter 1 verse number 7 the same thing in hebrews chapter 13 in verse number 18 willing again teleo having in mind to live that is what anostrapho to journey in the terms pertaining to the right word, to behave oneself, to have conversation, and to look upon the word of the Lord of a God, to conduct ourselves, to behave ourselves, willing to live honestly, callous, excellently, beautiful again, honorable. So pray for us. We trust we have an excellent consciousness, Kalas. And since we are having that excellent consciousness by distinguishing what is right and what is wrong, in all things we are having in mind to anostrapho, that is what again the Greek word for us, which is nothing but to conduct ourselves honestly. Again, the Greek word kalas, 2573 kalos, that is what rightly so that there shall be no room for blame you are true you are excellent you are noble you are honorable and that is what we have been called for us to live a life honestly the main problem in our present christendom you haven't made up that you shall be called as honest you have all the time blame you may say i am not having that blame i'm pure i'm wearing all the time white dress 
as many people love to wear such white dress. It is not the point that you wear white dress and you're having no room for blaming you. It's a very tough thing. Because if you're not exiting heterodidasco, remember that. If you're not inculcating to them the love of wisdom and knowledge, you need to create that thirst for them. You need to create that hunger for them, the right word. Know your life, know your fate by listening to the right word should be a title for you as a pastor teacher. We are not here to exchange our viewpoints in some terms that could please other men, not at all. We are not here to make ourselves in the terms pertaining to denominations and say, we belong to this trend, we belong to that trend. No, not at all. We have something great and unique in this church, as dear brother, and only certain few can enjoy it, provided they are all the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because the word says many are called, but few are chosen. That meant to say what all are been called, they can also enjoy this great privilege, unique one and a unique opportunity, but because of these elibis what they rise up, because of these reasons what they come up, they will not endure. That's what some will fall on the wayside, some will fall on the thorny soil, some will fall on the terms pertaining to rocky soil. But very few, why very few? Because they love not to walk in the straight gate by carrying their cross and becoming the disciples of the word of the Lord our God. They always love to walk in the broad road, big road. They don't want to walk in the straight gate, narrow road. Many love to walk but they cannot, says the word, because it's a tough thing for them to come to make them and become disciples. Who is having time to listen every day to doctrinal discourse, what we are posting, that's what they will say. Don't worry, you will have ample of time to reason and to plead for your ignorance and arrogance of the judgment seat of Christ because whom I have on this earth, said David in Psalms 20, 73, to have my Lord, whom I have in the heaven apart from him to desire. While I am here on this earth of pilgrimage trip, O Lord, you guide me through thy counsel and receive me back for thy glory. The man who has lost everything will realize the importance of what he has lost. And now we haven't lost anything, we have realized everything. Come back and take it up today. It is not late yet. Come back and become the disciple. Come back and right, try to walk in the narrow gate, straight gate. Be humble enough, no matter whether it may rain or shine. Come back and take in the word of the Lord of our God. We have something great and unique. Walk in the straight gate. The Lord of God says, You cannot be my disciple until unless you take up your cross and follow me. What a great truth it is for us. The people who love the word of the Lord of God more dearly than anything else, not to mix it with heterodidas class, not to deviate from the truth, they know the importance of this word. Desiring to become teachers. And not having in your mind that you are having a very good consciousness in all honesty to your living. How could you say that you will be the teacher of the world? You love to impress this man on this earth, but you cannot impress my Lord, my Rock, my Salvation, my Savior. The toughest thing, what the Lord of God says, these people refuse to believe, refuse to be comforted in Psalm 77 too. Why they refuse? Because they haven't removed the stumbling blocks yet. The greater they fail to be away from their stumbling blocks, the greater their lives are still ending up in life. Dear brethren, this life is unique for us. Don't waste it. The will of Lord God the Father is to redeem the time. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. A Cairo, awake. Look upon the seriousness of the condition of your salvation given to you. You are at a verge to lose it. So be careful about this true spiritual life. Do not inculcate with lies, fables, debates genealogy of endless questions but what is right and true in the sight of the lord of a god learn that know the truth and the truth sets it free 
Dear brethren, how many days more you want to be in a stage of milk and not to know the truth? We are here to give logos to the church, answerable to the Lord for this bona fide gift given to us, not to rule with cruelty, but we have come to be serving you in the knowledge and in the understanding of the word of the Lord our God, Jeremiah 315. And the work of the ambassadors is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And the work of the evangelists is to preach the gospel. And the pastor teacher is to prepare this body of Christ according to the authority of the first Adam. According to the authority of the last Adam, not according to the first Adam, but last Adam, Christ. And to make this church honorable in his sight, day by day, edifying in godly edification through the right use of young spiritual life. So dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short, the responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large. Which way you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue in the divine presence of Lord God the Father in heaven, which is nothing but to train you up to the praise of His glory tomorrow. Which way you want to go, you decide dear brethren, we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Lord, my Saviour, that is a moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the passive teacher, the greatest merit is to carry Sathan Lagan, herald the word, in season and out of season, being prepared, so that you shall not be ashamed when you stand in the presence of Lord God the Father, but rather you have taught them what is right doctrine. That's what your duty is to blow the trumpet, categorically, isagogically, exegetically, with the right dispensing technique of dispensations in teaching the great word of the Lord of the God. So that's your duty, and which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship through the word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, challenge and bless us by this message to remove the stumbling blocks and to follow thee, having a desire to teach the truth and nothing else than that, O Lord. As the people have had desire, but they haven't known the true calling of Christ yet they came. But yet, O Lord, you have given us this purpose and plan for us to understand the will and to exegete the word and help us to teach it and once again to put it back into our foundations, thy authority, not the authority of Eve, but the authority of Christ of our Lord, our God, our last Adam. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, may Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. Amen.